Hello, my viewers. You are welcome to this lesson. I am Usas, the author of this channel, and in this lesson, we're going to consider how to apply chain rule to solving trigonometric functions. You recall that in my last video, we talked about the memory age for the quotient rule. And so many of my friends were asking after uh, the application of chain rule to solve a trick function. So, because of their request, we're considering this video today on how to uh, use chain rule to solve trigonometric functions. Yes, in differentiation, it's very important that we have some basic differentiation functions in hand before we go into the chain rule properly. Now, look at these functions you can see on the screen. For example, you have y equals to sine x. If you differentiate y equals to sine x, what will you get? Obviously, you get the y by the x equals to cos x. That means if you differentiate sine x, you're going to get cos s. You can also write it in this short form. d sine x by dx is equals to cos s. That means differentiate sine s with respect to x, you are getting cos s. In the same way, if you differentiate cos s with respect to x, you are getting minus sine s. That is, Differentiate cos s with respect to s, you get minus sine s. And similarly, if you differentiate tan x with respect to x, you get in sec square x. These are the basic trig functions whose differential you are expected to know before you can actually apply chain rule to solving differential functions. Of course, let me just add this to our list of differential functions. For instance, you can have the exponential functions. e raised to power x is an exponential function. So if you differentiate e raised to power s with respect to s, it's not changing. It remains e raised to power x. And of course, you also have the log function. If you differentiate lin x with respect to s, you get in 1 over x. So these are the standard trig functions whose differential you are expected to know before we move properly to the chain rule. So far, we've seen if you differentiate sine s, you have cos s. You differentiate cos s, you have minus sine s. And if you differentiate tan s, you have in s square s. The exponential function is not changing. And if you differentiate lin s, you get in 1 over x. So let's now move on to the chain rule application properly. Fine. So let us assume y is equals to 1 over 2 sine s cubed plus 2 s squared minus 1. And you are asked to differentiate this function. This question is very good to illustrate the principles of how the chain rule works. First, you see the argument of this trig ratio sign. Just pick a new variable u and equate it to that argument. So I prefer using u as my new variable. So I could say let u be equals to the argument of this trig. Then I will differentiate this argument with respect to u. If I differentiate with respect to u, I'm going to have the u by ds, and that will give me 3s squared plus 4x. Recall that when you are differentiating, the index will come down, remove one from it. That's how we got this theory. If this index comes down, you have to. If you remove one from this theory, you have to. This plus is this. Then this index will come down. It will meet this two to be 4. When you remove one from there, it will remain s. If you differentiate a constant, it goes to zero. We've done several videos on this differentiation. If you have not visited those videos, please 
check the channel and look up those videos so that you can understand better what we're doing now so if i differentiate this function with respect to u have the u ds equals to 3x squared plus 4x then y will be equals to 1 all over u sine u 1 all over 2 sine u because we have replaced the argument with u i will now differentiate this one differentiate this function with respect to u if i do that i'm going to have the y by the u equals to 1 all over u 1 over 2 cos u recall that when you differentiate sine you get cos now this is the actual chain rule the y by the s equals to the y by the u times the u ds. The two differentials you had so far, just multiply them. You can see it's a very straightforward the rule and it's deemed to be marked good. So if I bring in my variables, I will have the y by the s equals to 1 all over 2 cos u. That is this the y by the u. Then times my du by the s is this. So I'll just multiply the two, and whatever I have is my differential. So if I do that, I'm going to have the y by the x equals to 1 over 2 times this argument will come back. I will have 3x squared plus 4x cos u. Then do this simplification, I'm going to arrive at my answer as... Uh, the y by the x equals to 3x squared plus 4x over 2 cos x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. This is the simple application of a chain rule. The idea remains that you choose a new variable u and equate it to the argument. It could be sine, it could be cosine, it could be tangent, it could even be exponential function. Whatever the argument is, choose a new variable, equate it to it, differentiate bring your substitution back to the original equation, differentiate again, multiply the two differentials. That's how the print chain rule operates. I want to thank you very much for watching this video to the end. We appreciate our returning viewers for helping us grow the channel. And if you are a new uh, viewer, please subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this channel because very soon we will be expanding on this channel. We will include other items that we made this channel a very robust one. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.